start jumping in. Um, hi, if I haven't met you before, my name is Cal Marquis. Um, I work at Bywater Solutions on the Aspen Discovery team. Um, and we're really excited for all of you to join us today for our first Aspen Academy. Um, we're launching this throughout the year. We have four different topics um, so far, and then we'll be releasing some more maybe next month. I think we'll probably have some more, but um, just to reiterate where you can find this information, um, you might have found this information from coming to the gathering or maybe in an email blast, um, but if you want to see the other upcoming ones that we have, just going to help.aspendiscovery.org slash Aspen Academy, um, and I'll post that too. Um, you'll be able to find all the other upcoming um, subjects that we have going on where you can register and also view all the agendas. Um, if anyone else on your staff wants to watch this, if it's just so fantastic and you're going to rave about it to your coworkers, um, they can watch the recording as well. So we'll have it on that same page. I am joined today um, by Morgan, who's also on the Aspen Discovery team and who is another Aspen Implementation Specialist. We are going to be kind of co-hosting all of these sessions, so you will see both of us at all of them. Um, I think today she's going to kick us off uh, going over some helpful design resources that might be helpful for the things that I'm going to show you that we're going to create in Aspen today. Um, and then we'll jump into like actually setting up in the admin settings, things like your theme and menu links, placards and system messages. But I think, Morgan, if you want to say anything and kick it <laughs> off, uh, she's going to start. Of course. So um, I dropped a link in the chat um, and here it is again. This is just today's agenda. If you want to follow along, if you want to look at any of the additional resources, and this is where we'll post the recording uh, once we are done. But I wanted to take a quick moment to talk about some of the um, extra resources that we added to this page. Um, just I'm sure we have all levels of backgrounds here for design and everything. Um, so I wanted to explain what these resources are. So me and my 500 tabs open, um, but here in the documentation and resources section, um, I linked some of my personal favorite tools. Um, I think a lot of us in here may be familiar with Canva already. Um, kind of broke my heart is I, <laughs> come from a graphic design background, so I'm sure all of my teachers would um, hiss and boo for me using Canva so much and not like Adobe, but um, Canva is such a great accessible tool. Um, if you don't already know this as library staff, um, you can apply to have a free nonprofit account for your library. If you're paying for Canva, you should not be paying for it unless it's like your own personal account, I guess. Um, I put a link there specifically where you can go to apply for a free for nonprofit account for Canva. Um, but it's just a very easy to use, um, user friendly online design program. It's not like software you have to download or anything. It, you can all do it within your browser. Um, so you can create your logo in there. You can create marketing materials in there. Um, if you haven't dabbled in Canva, I highly recommend checking that out. Um, this top link here, Photo P, I think is what it's called, Photopia, I don't know how to say it, but um, this is like a free online clone of Adobe Photoshop. So if you need to do a little more intense image editing and, you know, cropping images and, you know, editing and adding all your lens flares and whatnots to your images, um, Photopia, whatever you want to call it, um, that is a great resource. Um, Affinity, I wanted to link this because even though this isn't free, um, it is very, very similar to the Adobe Creative Suite design software. So if that is uh, more of the world you come from or are familiar with, but don't feel like paying the Adobe prices, um, this is a really great alternative that I found out about. And then um, this is for everybody, this cooler site. Um, if you're playing around with your color schemes um, and you're thinking you want to freshen up your, your theme, which is one of the stuff we're going to talk about today, um, this is a free tool for generating color palettes. So if you don't feel like learning color theory and you're just like, I want to quickly generate some complementary colors that would look good with my, my logo and with my library's branding, um, this is a tool where you can just plop in like your main logo color or whatever, and then it'll come up with suggestions for like, here are some related colors. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to explain what those are and why you might want to use them. 
So I'm going to turn it back over to Cal. Um, and if you have any questions about those, feel free to pop them in the chat and I'll, I'll be looking to answer those. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and if you do have any questions while I'm talking, um, we're kind of tag teaming this because we have a variety of level of permissions and levels of people using Aspen for maybe four weeks to four years. Um, so Morgan is here to help also with uh, questions in the chat. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, I have a demo site up that I am going to primarily be walking through today. Um, and I'm going to share my screen. And we did put the permissions um, that you need on the agenda. So if if you're not seeing something today when I'm sharing my screen, um, we have, again, a variety of level of consortiums and different library structures. Everyone might have a little bit different permissioning. So we do have that on the agenda. Um, if you're missing something afterwards, maybe just double check with your library administrator that you have those correct permissions or if there's something that you feel like you're missing. So I just want to kind of asterisk that out before I do share my screen. Um, okay, so I have a little just made up site uh, here that I've put together. And um, what I first want to start off with is theme. So we did a number of different theme changes um, in 2023 and a few different things of our like different releases. Um, so most notably, I would say uh, making the screen um, widescreen, which we'll look at. So if right now you have a site that has maybe more of a cropped view and you haven't seen this, um, one of the things that we're able to do is make um, a full screen view. We've also added a number of different things in the theme that we'll look at that you can customize, um, like the book default book covers, um, icons in your search results, icons in Explore More. So we've just, if you haven't clicked into your theme in a while, we've added a lot of different customizations in this past year. Uh, so that's what I want to jump into first. And to get there, um, just go into your Aspen administration. Um, if you haven't been in Aspen administration in a while, one of the most amazing things we did in this past year was make these settings searchable. So if you are like, you know, feel overwhelmed by all the menu options or things that you see, just start typing themes um, and these settings will pop right up. So the first ones I'm going to show you is just clicking into your themes. Um, depending on if what level, you know, of admin you are, um, you might see hundreds of themes here, um, or you might just see one. Um, sometimes it's just called default or maybe the name of your library system. Uh, for today, I'm going to use my Springfield library test. Um, you can also, if you are that admin that's managing hundreds of sites or dozens of sites, you can also um, always search within settings as well. So just a lot of searching capability if it's been a while since you've you know, uh, been in Aspen and, and made some changes. So I'm going to click into my theme. Um, the other thing is, if, if again, level of admin in here, um, if you haven't kind of worked in the back end, clicking on this button, um, it is a button, or coming over here and clicking edit, they both do the same thing. So however you want to get into your theme settings, um, you just navigate, uh, find your library or find where it says default and go ahead and click in there. Um, now we're going to come into a lot of different settings. But the beauty of this is that we also made this searchable. So if you're looking for something like you just want to update your browse categories, you could just go ahead and search browse and see the browse category colors. Um, if you're looking to just update a logo, you could just search logo and see what's available there. So again, just the searching, like if you haven't been searching, it was life changing um, going into these settings and being able to do that. So this is just a little shortcut if you're looking for just like one specific thing that you want to change. Um, I'm going to go through some of the, the kind of the changes over the last year, really, and some of the ones that are going to make the biggest impact to really customize out your library brand. Um, so one of them was making that um, header and footer full width. So if I click this now um, and save, you'll see at the top what changes. So this went down to like our original Aspen configuration. So there only used to be one choice. This is what it looked like. So you can see that the, the header here kind of uh, cuts off on the page and everything sort of like in the same funnel. So if you like the idea of making this a little bit wider, um, especially when we start looking at menu links, um, if you do have a number of menu links here, this gives you a little bit more room to kind of like stretch those out. So by updating this, just click on it, hit save. Um, everything within your theme that we look at today is going to be an immediate change. So you could see how quick that was. I clicked the box, I hit save, updated, I'm on my way. 
Um, so any of these settings within theme should be like an immediate change for you when you're updating them. Um, I just want to make sure don't need to stop at all. Okay. Um, other things. Aspen needs a logo updated. So all of you should have a logo of some sort updated here. If you don't have something here, your site is probably either broken or has like a broken image. We wouldn't let that happen. So all of you should have something here that's up uploaded in this first image um, logo uh, box here. And that's what corresponds up here at the top. So this is where we put um, your logo during implementation or you reached out to us and we, you know you put a logo in there. Everybody should have something over here in in the in this box. Um, the sizing might vary. Some of you all might have more things like more banners or, or wider images, uh, but you do have to have something uploaded here. When we're looking at images, we try to make recommendations as much as possible. So if we're we're steering you towards a certain size, so like pixel size, um, 1140 by 225 maximum and 250, 100, I would say that's like minimum. Um, we try to give you some guidelines to work within. Um, the other thing with this is that at the top, we have linked documentation. This will take you right out to our themes help center page where we make even more suggestions on like sizing suggestions and um, you know uploading things like PNG instead of JPEG is really important for like the clarity on a browser. Uh, the other thing that some libraries discovered is that you can also upload um, GIFs or GIFs. So like, I don't know, that's one of the things I have no idea how to pronounce it either. We can battle that for the rest of the time today, probably. Um, but you can upload, we have some libraries um, that have uploaded like banners and logos that move. So that is um, an acceptable format as well. Um, after you have your logo uploaded, you have some additional customization right underneath that. So we have the favicon. That's what shows up in uh, the browser when you're browsing. So it's really helpful to, to tell the difference if you look up at my screen. Okay, this is like the Aspen page. This is the library website. Hey, I have Canva open. Um, so you can see how it, it just helps with the navigation when you have 100 browser tabs open like Morgan. You can tell exactly what page you're on. Um, this would be something that's a lot smaller if you can kind of see uh, it's a, it's it's not containing like the whole logo. You wouldn't be able to read that, but maybe just an identifier, like a piece of your logo. Um, you might want to put that in here. Uh, this is a great thing to use Canva for as well, um, because uh, if you are using Canva, and I'll just like show you really quick, um, you can just click create a design and you can do a custom size and you could put in 32 by 32 or 40, I think is the smallest, but you could, that will work as well. Oops. Uh, not Canva. Um, and then you can create the design um, and it'll just automatically resize it to those specifications that um, that you're looking for. So you can look at our design specifications. You could come into something like Canva, make a custom size, and then just put your logo in here and download it. And then you're all set to go. Um, the next one is if you are an Aspen Lita user. So if you if you haven't heard, we have a, an app called Aspen Lita, a library discovery app. It is Aspen's companion app. And you are able to upload an image if you want um, it to show uh, on the Aspen app when users are searching for your library. So again, this is a much smaller app when you, uh, I'm sorry, a smaller image when you think about app size. So it's not showing up my whole um, Springfield Library logo, but maybe, you know, people identify with my brand with this stack of books. And so when they're searching for my Springfield Library, which there's probably maybe a lot of those, they'll be able to quickly identify like the branding that this is a part of my um, library system. So you can also upload a custom image for that here. Um, the next one that's pretty new is this background image for default covers. So I'm going to show you an example of this, but this is also something that you can customize. So Aspen has a number of different ways that it pulls in cover images. You might subscribe to something like Content Cafe or Syndetics. Um, you might have a staff member that absolutely loves uploading cover images for your kits or, you know, for your special collections. Um, we also have a number of free resources uh, that we, we set you up with to pull in custom images. But there's just sometimes where you don't have an image available. Um, there, like there's maybe like a kit or something that they're just not a standard cover that's recognizable. So in the past, Aspen um, would auto generate, let me find my example, um, would auto generate a cover um, that was just based off of your theme colors. 
And it would just show things like um, just some lines and shapes. Um, and it would have the cover image up here. And then down here, it would just have all those like lines and shapes, just auto-generated image. Uh, it was a little bit, it's like a little bit of like an 80s kind of throwback, like with like the different shapes and, and things like that. Um, and some people love it and that's totally fine. But if you do want to add another place for some custom branding within your catalog, um, you can upload an image in that default cover image uh, location within your theme, and it will automatically replace all those default covers. So anywhere that Aspen couldn't find a cover, it'll replace it with a nice little branded design that you created. So we have some libraries that are using parts of their logo, um, or they've just designed something really cutesy um, that just goes along with their theme. And it just really, it does really make an impact, especially when you're browsing through those like special collections or kits. Um, if you don't have the individual photos uh, uploaded, it looks really, really great. And it's just another way that you can promote your brand throughout the catalog. Um, so that's one with that uploaded. And that is just within that um, background image for default covers. Um, I'm going to just do a quick overview of like how you can switch colors. So if it's been a minute, um, there's kind of different ways that you can do this. So of course, if you do have brand hex colors that you use, you can just type those in um, and Aspen will, you know, put those in for that slot that you have. Um, the other thing, actually, I'm going to scroll down just a little bit to um, our main colors. So primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. Um, the other thing that we sometimes do um, is we will use this color picking tool. So if you're not sure what your colors are, or um, if you don't have like dedicated, you know, hex colors that you have to use, and you're just trying to like color match, um, you can use this little dropper tool. And basically what you can do is you can hover it over your logo. So if you have your logo open in another browser or something like that, or your, your library website open in another browser, you can hover it over and it will color pick that color for you. Um, and then of course you can just browse, like if you wanted to, you know, search this way, um, you're also able to do that. Um, the other thing, if you haven't noticed, is that Aspen has a default or built-in uh, accessibility tool. So in this case, I tried to put um, a primary background color of like this like light white cream. Um, and on top of it, I was using a primary text color of white. Aspen said, no, this doesn't meet our contrast ratio for accessibility guidelines. And if I tried to save this right now, it's not going to allow me to make that change because it's not accessible for our users that have um, you know, visual needs uh, with that. Also, it just doesn't look great. So we're kind of um, preventing you from having a website that has like navy on maroon or you know, beige on yellow, which we've all been to that PowerPoint presentation. Um, so not only do we want your sites to look wonderful, but we it ultimately, more importantly, we need them to be accessible. So this is a built-in tool um, and you do have to get to this like um, green is the best. Green means like, go, great job. Um, there is like a yellow color that will pop up um, that will say, eh, it's not the best, but we're going to let this save. Um, but if you do come across a red, it will not let you save. So just kind of keep that in mind. Or if you do try to save, you're going to get um, an alert. Changing these primary, secondary, tertiary colors if you just come into your theme and change these three and don't touch anything else, that is going to have the biggest impact on the overall look and feel of your library catalog. So um, things like your search box, your menu, uh, headers, um, just overall navigation from your catalog primarily comes from these three uh, colors here. So even if you don't want to mess with every single breadcrumb and every single hyperlink and every single button, just come in and focus on these three colors. Um, one thing I scrolled past, but I want to point out, um, maybe especially if you are part of a consortium or in part of a state statewide network, or um, even if you want to give a nod to somebody who's like funding uh, maybe your library catalog or your programs, uh, we do have you do have access to add an additional logo within your footer. Um, you also have a place where you can link to that footer. So in this case, my fake library, um, I have them a part of a consortium. So by uploading a logo here for this library consortium that I'm a part of and, and adding their um, URL, uh, once I hit save, it's going to show down at the bottom um, in my footer. So that's one nice place where you can add um, some of that unified like consortial branding across all of your catalogs. 
Um, let's see. Uh, other things with your brand, um, you do have access to upload custom fonts within Aspen. Um, if you're using a custom font, like you've paid for it on your library website, um, or even you like a, a Google, like a free Google font that they have, you can upload fonts. Um, they have a heading option and also a body option. Um, or you can just shop from, there's about 12 different fonts that are preloaded for you. Uh, you can get an idea of what they look like by selecting one um, over here. And then when you hit save, it's gonna automatically change across your catalog. Um, it's so interesting how much of an impact this has, um, but if you are trying to say match a library website, or again, if you have brand guidelines where everything must be published in whatever it is, you are able to upload a font or you know select from one of these defaults um, to make that branding match uh, across uh, catalogs and you know your other brand guidelines that you have. All right, um, other new things that we've added this year uh, or this past year now, um, we have format category icons. So I have already uploaded them, but I'm going to show you where they where they are. Um, but in the past, across the top of your search, um, there are some like default icons that were available. You've seen them on your catalog probably if you haven't uploaded these new images. Um, they're like gray icons. When you click on them, they change color. Um, now you're able to create and upload icons of your choosing for those spots. So you have um, two spots per icon, one for when you actually um, haven't selected it, and then one for when you have selected it. And I'll, I'll show you this. Um, but the icons of like book and ebook, audiobook, music, movies. Um, we had a number of libraries who were figuring out how to update them themselves with like CSS and JavaScript. And we just thought it was a really nice way that you all can control the branding of your library catalog. Um, and why not just make this a part of our default settings? So where these live um, is if we go into our search here, um, you'll see these icons across the top. Um, so you're able to upload those icons in their corresponding spots. And then like if I click on books, it should change to the other book icon that I've uploaded so that I can see the difference between like selecting and, and deselecting. So that is one option that you can update. Um, and then right underneath it in the theme, so we have all these different icons here, scroll down, um, we have explore more images. So if you are a fan of the Explore More box, and maybe you have a ton of integrations turned on, you have EBSCO turned on, you have an events integration, you have genealogy, like your Explore More is popping off, like you have all these, all these default icons. Um, what we decided to do is give you the option to replace the default icons that were used. I think there's like, um, you know, there's like a, a globe maybe you've seen, there's like an EBSCO like logo, uh, like an events calendar. Maybe you would like to match those instead to something with your branding on it or with your color scheme or, you know, whatever matches or whatever updates that you want to make. So in under explore more images, you can upload an image corresponding to all those different integrations that you might have. So we have one for library catalog, genealogy, articles and databases. So that would be like if you're using EBSCO integration, um, events, if you're using one of the event integrations, lists, um, we have library website, history and archives. I uploaded the library catalog and the list because everybody should um, have those two things pretty much, but I'll show you what they look like when you're accessing um, them from the catalog. So if I do a search for father in this case, um, and I go down to my explore more box, I have lists now. So that's where that updated um, image is. So I just, up, I, it matched the colors in my logo. I thought it was more modern. I wanted to update it. So I uploaded that here. And then if I, let's see, I think I have another URL that I had one populated for. Um, yeah, so if I do a search within lists, and I see explore more. Um, I uploaded this logo for my library catalog that would take me back into my catalog results. So just to get an idea of like what these look like um, when you have them uploaded within the um, explore more box. But there's a lot of customization available. And again, it just really ties in and your branding and makes it look really unique. Um, I think in the interest of time, I think those are really all the main um, 
new big ways within your theme that you can update and customize your icons and your logos um, and all of that, especially using those free resources that Morgan showed us at the beginning. So I am probably going to pivot over to menu links unless there is an urgent question. I'm just looking at the chat. Looks good. All right, so let's talk about menu links. So the menu links isn't new necessarily, but maybe just during implementation, you didn't have time to set them up or um, you know, maybe you're just thinking of updating the ones that you have. So just do a little bit of a refresher on menu links and like why they're great and why they're important and how easy they are to set them up. So menu links can show up across the top here, right here, um, or over in the side in what we call the hamburger menu. So you can have them go either place. Um, the beauty of menu links, I think from like, marketing, thinking about marketing and branding is all of your patrons are coming to your library catalog pretty much to look for something. They're already, they have their eyes focused right on this search box. So why not right on top of that search box, um, maybe let them know about museum passes or events or library of things or sign up for a newsletter or, you know, all those other things that you're dying to tell people about. And maybe they, it's, it's a little bit nestled in your library website or, you know, it's just another place, another opportunity for you to have free real estate to promote whatever it is that you want. So I really love like the endless opportunities that you have with menu links and putting that so prominently um, across your library catalog. Um, so to set these up, I'm gonna go into my Aspen administration menu. And this is actually under library systems. Um, so if I start to search for library systems, I'm gonna click into that. And I always like to explain library systems as like, think of it as your library catalogs. So if you're confused about like what library systems versus locations do, I like mentally rename library systems to like library catalog settings. So if that helps you to remember, then hopefully it does because it helps me to remember. Um, if you are a consortial, if you're, if you're admin for a consortia, you might see multiple different library catalogs that you manage here. Um, if you just have one, you're probably just gonna, you're just gonna see your one library. Um, but again, you can just search for this. So I am in Springfield Library, so I'm gonna click into here. And I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom because there's lots and lots of goodie settings in here. So I'm gonna scroll all the way to the bottom. Do, 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 do. Still scrolling, okay. And then you're gonna see a menu links area here. Um, what this is going to do is you're gonna start gonna build out a table of your menu links. I highly suggest um, if you're like a visual person that you first kind of maybe write out an outline or something on a piece of paper, a scratch paper, a, a Word doc of what you're thinking that you're going to lay out. Um, one thing is because you have sort of limited real estate across the top, maybe some things you want across the top, some things you want along, you know, over on the side menu. Um, the other thing is that you can make drop down menus. So thinking about maybe what the overarching header is going to be or the category and then what goes underneath them. Um, I just know for me, like that helps to sketch that out. So I am going to go ahead and just hit add new a bunch because I've already spatially laid out what I'm going to be doing. Um, and now I'm just going to start plugging in these links and telling Aspen like how I want them to display. So the first thing is think about that categories or that header, especially if you're going to do a drop down menu. Um, so my first one, I am just going to do an events calendar. So I'm going to click on events. We did have an update or, or Font Awesome had an update this year. So you might have noticed, or maybe you haven't noticed, um, when you click on this little eye, it's going to show you all the different icons that you have available to add to your menu links. So I'm gonna click on that little eye. It's gonna open up a new tab. And I have access to 1,001 free icons that I can put next to my menu link. Now, not all of these are library related. I don't know if you want wine glasses next to your events calendar. Maybe you do, no judgment. Um, but in our documentation, in our help center, we have ones that um, libraries use most. So please click into um, like the help center. If you go to menu links, we will, we have like pulled out the ones that libraries most often use. If you find the 1001 really overwhelming. Um, but all you have to do is you just browse or you can search for what you're looking for. So like calendar, um, and I can just put in the code of any of these. So I could just say calendar or I could do 
calendar slash day or calendar slash alt, whichever one I decide, I just need to either copy and paste or just type in um, that word. And then that icon will just automatically display with my, um, with my menu link. So I'm going to go ahead and do calendar. Um, if I just want this to be a singular link, so I want them to click on my a button for events and it takes me right out to events, um, then all I need to do is just uh, put my same text in for my link. Uh, and then I'm going to direct it where it's going to go. So like my events calendar.com, you know, wh wherever it is, like your LibCal, your Google Calendar, your library page, like wherever you want them to be directed when they click on it. I get to events. Um, okay. Then the next part is where do you want to send this icon? Um, typically, if you're gonna do it across the search bar, um, I would say probably just check these two boxes. Um, the other things that are going to be checked automatically are things like open in a new tab. So when I click on it, um, it's just gonna open a new tab in my browser. And then should it automatically be published? So maybe there's something that you only want up seasonally, like a link out to your summer reading programs. You could set this up unpublish it when it's over, come back next year, republish it again. Uh, but by default, it's going to be checked on. You can also show things to just logged in users only. So if you have something that's only accessible to um, library card holders, for example, um, you can have this show uh, not when they're si signed out, but when they sign in, it will just magically appear to them. So that's also an option that you have. Now, this is an update um, that's not even coming out until next week in the release, but you're going to have some new options here when it comes to menu links. If you are a user of Aspen Lita, um, we now have a way that you can add menu links to the app. So by default, it's going to land on discovery only, but you have a choice to add custom links to Aspen Lita only um, or a combination of both. So now you're going to see some different options there. And for our consortium friends, um, you have an option to copy menu links. So if you have set up a menu link to say um, location, like find a library location across the system, and you want to apply it to all 50 of your catalogs, you can come into one catalog. I don't know if it'll work because I haven't saved this yet. Um, uh, you can come into one catalog, click copy menu links, and you could copy it in one click to all of your other library catalogs. This is going to be a huge time saver when you are trying to do that batch update across all the catalogs. Um, so definitely take a look at that in our next release. Um, okay, so I have my events link. Um, I'm going to start doing a drop down menu. So I'm going to do resources as a drop down. Um, I think that there's probably a laptop icon because I've done this a bunch. So I'm just going to type in laptop. Um, now I'm going to think like, what do I want in this drop down? Um, my first link, I might want something like databases, and I'm going to put my URL in for databases and pretend. And I want it to show at the top, so I'm going to do that. Um, and now I want a link underneath that databases. So I'm going to copy down this same category. Um, so I know that Aspen will know to put these links together. And then I'm going to say underneath that, I want, I don't know, services. Um, and then I could just put my link in for services. And if you've noticed, if you are linking out to a page within Aspen, so like a web builder page, my account, um, a list, you can actually just use the, um, the end of the URL. So it, what it's implying here is your Aspen discovery URL slash services slash databases. So if you are using a page within Aspen, you can just do a shortcut that way. Okay, and then I am just gonna add another singular link. I have a robot, library of things. Um, maybe I have a list or something that I'm going to link to. And finally, I'm gonna do one that I don't wanna go across the top. So I want this to go on that hamburger or side menu. So we see a lot of times maybe just some information, policies and procedures, mission and vision. Um, maybe that doesn't really make sense right across the top, but maybe it's nice to have maybe on the side. Um, so I'm going to do, I think there's one called info, about us, about us. I know these are going to work. Um, and then I'm going to leave these unchecked. So by leaving these unchecked, it's, it's telling Aspen to automatically move it over to that side menu. So when you're happy with all of the different ones that you have laid out, um, I will mention too, you can drag and drop these. So if you want something to come first, 
um, like you want library of things to come first, then events to come first and so on, it's very easy to just move these up and down. So when I hit save, it's gonna automatically publish any links that I had published and it's going to put, so I have events, my resources drop down here, and then the one for about us over in the side, it just automatically moved it to that hamburger menu because I didn't have those um, show on top um, there. So very, very quick to set up. Um, lots of fun icons that you can use. I love this little robot guy. Um, it just makes it really like visually engaging. And I think it really does like put those things in front of the patrons. We've seen really nice examples, like I said, of like library of things or databases, events, programs, um, museum passes, like libraries offer so much more than books. And they just don't know about it. So it's just like a really nice prominent place that you can promote those things. All right, gonna keep going, trying to talk as fast as possible. <laughs> okay, the next one I wanna show you is something called placards. Um, placards gives you the ability to promote anything you want within your catalog and you're tying it to certain keywords that patrons are going to be searching. So you already have your ideal user. They're searching for what they're looking for. So you can tie them to specific library resources. So the one I'm gonna create today that we're gonna look at, um, I'm gonna show you where this lives. This is also a plug. If you haven't gone on our help center and clicked on um, about and clicked on partner spotlight, there are some wonderful examples of things like menu links and placards and like things that libraries are doing that um, you can click on any of the images and it will take them take you out to those. So if you want to get some inspiration for any of these types of things, um, I just want to plug um, our help center too while we start setting this up. So, all right, I'm going to go into my settings and I'm going to search for placards. And I'm gonna click into placards. And I already have a lot of examples set up here. So let's go ahead and just hit add new. And I think I have something for consumer reports on my desktop already. So I'm gonna click consumer reports, type that in as my title. This title is not gonna show to anyone else except it's going to be in that list so that I know which one I'm clicking into and editing. So whatever you need to name this um, for you to be able to find it. Then we have a start and end date. I love this because this is such a set it and forget it moment. You could decide to feature this for a certain amount of time. You could make a placard for an event. You can make a placard for summer reading. Um, you can make you know anything that you want. You are in control to say, I only want this to show within my catalog from this date to this date. And you don't have to remember to go back in and take it off. So this is really powerful, especially if you're doing something that's like a program or something that you, you only want to promote during a certain time frame. Now, you can just come in and say, Consumer Reports is a free database. You have access to, you know, whatever else you want to put. Here's the link. You can use this box that says body. Um, and you're able to upload a you know simple image. You could add hyperlinks here. Um, but what I'm going to suggest, especially since we showed you how nice and easy it is to use something like Canva or a free resource, um, is to instead, I, I would say, kind of ignore this um, and upload an image with whatever your, you want your placard to look like. So our suggestion for size is um, 800 by 150. And I just so happen to have a little Consumer Reports banner that I made in Canva that I'll show you. And I just prefer the look of just putting all of the information that you want the placard to show in a nicely designed banner outside of Aspen, and then just uploading that entire image into Aspen for the placards. Um, I think it looks like really nice and clean. Um, then you're going to put in whatever link when I click on that placard where I want them to go. So if it's consumer reports, am I accessing that through EBSCO subscription or um, you know, something else. I'm just putting this here as, as a default for today. Um, if it's Mango Languages, you know, maybe I have my own page. If it's Canopy, maybe I have my own URL as a library. So whatever link you want them when they click on it to access. And then you're going to control when a patron searches for that thing um, in the catalog, which placard shows. So for consumer reports, maybe someone is searching for appliances or baby items or cars or reviews, or products, or uh, 
Maybe they're just searching for consumer reports. So if you do something like a phrase or a sentence, um, you can utilize this exact match. So right now, if I were to search for consumer or if I were just to search, search for reports, this would come up, this placard would come up. If I click on exact match, then only if the user searches for consumer reports should that come up. So it makes kind of more sense if you were making one for like baby time or something. Um, maybe if they search for time, it wouldn't make sense for it to come up. But if you search for baby time, it would. So just you have this ability to control if it's individual words or exact matches. And you can add as many of these as you want. Um, you also are able to control your catalog. We could do another whole training on um, creating a catalog for people of you know, other language needs. Um, but you can technically make a placard just in Spanish and have it show on the Spanish translation catalog or just in France and have it or, or in French and have it display in your French translation. Um, and then you could make those trigger words in that language. So it's very powerful if you ever did want to go that next step. Um, but by default, we typically just suggest just select all if you have multiple different languages. Um, and then you're, to publish this, essentially, you're just going to select the library catalog that you want it live on. Um, now, if I go hit save, if I were now to go do a search for babies or cars or products or consumer reports, um, I should be able to see that placard right here um, at the top of my search results. When I click on it, it's going to take users out to um, any link that I had put there. And this is just a little banner that I created in Canva in like a minute. I just, you know, I got the consumer reports logo. I put a little message about what they should do. They should click on this. It's free with their library card. But if I were to search now for like romance, I'm not searching for consumer reports. Um, I won't see it. So it's, it's targeting the user that might be interested in it. Um, you know, if you have a number of databases, tutor.com, Mango Languages, um, different testing databases, having that pull up on things like if a user searches for ACT or SAT, having your test database show up. Um, if you have a career or resume database, um, putting those trigger words in. It's just a really nice way that they can see a targeted ad, basically, um, right at the top of their page. Um, yes, thank you, Morgan. Very important. I didn't mean to gloss over it. Um, adding alt text, pretty much anywhere that you um, see an image ability to upload, uh, you should see this alt, alt text, which is really important for um, screen readers. So if you know you have information, definitely fill that in as well. Um, the one other thing that I forgot and I skipped over is that you can make these dismissible. So this is just nice for patrons when they're logged in. Um, if they're going to do the same search over and over and over again, and they've already seen this placard a million times, um, they're able when they're logged into, there's a little Xbox, um, they're able to, to dismiss that placard. Um, it's just for that specific placard. They can still see other placards that you have targeted um, in the catalog. Uh, but this one, um, it's just a nice little courtesy thing for your patrons. All right. Well, let's keep moving. Um, the last like official thing I have on the, the agenda today is system messages. And I don't think I like fully understood <laughs> until like the last six months, like how much I love system messages and how much libraries love system messages, but they are just, it's a really powerful, it's so simple, but it's like a really powerful thing um, that gives you just a lot of control uh, within Aspen. And I just think it's really great. So um, what they are um, by default, uh, usually what we see is it's a, it's a message that will appear on top of your header. Uh, there's lots of different ways that I've seen this used, uh, signing up for like voters registration, promoting summer reading, uh, plumbing has overflowed our bathrooms and we have no plumbing today and no bathrooms today. Um, our book drop was hit. Uh, we're closing for the holiday coming up uh, for President's Day. There's like so many different ways that you can use these. Um, what I'm going to do is show you where the settings are. So I'm going to go back into my Aspen administration area. Um, I could also navigate over on the side, uh, but I like, I'd like to just, I love to search these. It's cool. So, okay, I'm going to search for system messages. And as you can see, you can have all kinds of different system messages. Um, I think I had one here already started, but let me just steal... Let me just steal the image and I can recreate it. 
All right, so I'm going to hit add new uh, just to start a new one. And give it a title. It's not shown to the public, so just showed to the staff so you know what it is. Um, hiring at Springfield. Um, you have this message body box. And if you haven't used one of these yet, they're all over Aspen for all kinds of different things. And you don't need really any coding knowledge at all. Um, if you do like HTML and you want to use it, you can put that in. But otherwise, you can just type whatever message uh, you want here. Uh, you have different formatting uh, options available. You have a number of different fonts available. You can scale the sizing, the color. Hey, you can even add emojis, which is pretty cool. Um, lots of options, hyperlinks, uh, tables, images. It's really robust without needing any like knowledge of like coding at all. Um, I had just already done this. So what I did is I just uploaded an image here from my library brand. It's actually the same image that I used for my header. Um, I put we're hiring and I put a link out to our hiring page. Um, I'm also able, if I'm using the app to uh, Aspen Lita, to also display a message in Aspen Lita. It's not going to display the image, but I can I can still let folks know that, you know, we're hiring, you know, please reach out, if, you know, if interested, and I could put a phone number in and anything else, but it, it allows me to get some messaging out within Aspen Lita. Um, by default, it's going to land on all pages. All pages is that top part of the header that I referred to, but I think that this is really cool. There's some messages that maybe you don't need everywhere that are very specific to things like checkouts or holds or fines or contact information that you can also tailor to those different pages. So you can have multiple different system messages active at once. So for example, like the library used to work at our holds truck was, or delivery truck was always broken down. Like holds were regularly like five to seven days late. So if we could just put a message up when that was happening on the holds page that said, you know, holds are running a little bit behind this week or something. Um, maybe I don't want that on all my pages, but it would make sense if people are checking in on their holds. So just different, different ways that you can target different messaging to your patrons. Um, this is a, you're hiring. I'm going to leave it on all pages. Um, I also have available ability to uh, put things like uh, if it's if it's something bad, if you're closing all of a sudden, uh, you know, at the last minute, you can add a little banner that says danger and red. Um, there's yellow, blue, green. If you want, it's just going to add a little like color behind that message just to get additional attention. These are also dismissible. So when you think about things like holiday closures, if after this you're inspired and you want to go set one of these up for every single one of your 2024 holiday closures, maybe. Um, you could do that because you can set a start and end date for this to show. So you could just have it, you know, going up about a week before maybe the holiday closure and then have it close um, that evening or in the early morning. It'll show um, not only a date, but also a time that you can do the start and end date. Again, you can make this dismissible. So um, if you're going to show it kind of big and prominently, especially across all pages, when patrons log in, they can close it out. Um, on that same vein, if you are adding an image, I would say keep it really small because when you think about your header, um, it's going to bump down all of your search functionality and your browsing functionality. So if you if you upload a huge image, I'm going to have to scroll way down to be able to actually access your catalog. So just kind of keep that in mind. If you are going to use any sort of like logo or image, keep it really small. Um, then I'm going to publish it. So I'm going to publish it to Springfield Catalog. And as long as I don't have a start and end date in the future, when I save it, I should see it automatically. Um, and I'm able to see that we're hiring and I can click on this link and I see my little brand here. Um, this is what makes it dismissible. So if I am logged in, I'm able to close that out. Um, and again, you can have as many as you want. So if you want to set up different ones and start like start and end dates, um, you can come in if there is any sort of emergency or, you know, issue, just having another place to be able to make patrons aware, save yourself some phone calls. Um, I think it's always like a nice feature. Okay. That is what we had on our agenda for today. I, I'm so glad we have a few minutes to talk and have some time for questions. Um, so what else maybe were you expecting today or can I show you today or do you have questions about that I can go over?
who's going to stop after this and go do all these things? That's what I hope. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, good question. So uh, Mike's asking about dismissibility. So um, that's when you do turn on this um, dismissal, dismissible button here. Um, it will be related to that ID. So everything when you create an Aspen, you should kind of see this probably arbitrary to you number that pops up. So there's a unique ID for each different thing that you're creating. So this really relates to like where it's stored in the database. Um, but my suggestion is don't reuse placards or don't um, don't reuse a system message. As long as you always come in and hit add new um, and create that, then that's going to ensure that um, if a number of different people dismissed um, your previous message um, that it's going to be like, it's going to refresh that pool of people basically. So the dismissal is tied to this individual number of that thing that you created. So as soon as you hit add new, now I should have like a new ID once I create this, um, it's, it's the dismissals aren't related. So it's just that object that they're dismissing. If that makes sense. And you can add new as many as you want. So don't feel like, you know, you have to use one placard template and keep repurposing it. Like definitely you can have a dozen placards. You can have a dozen system messages um, just, at you know, staggered at different times. Um, oh, I should say this, uh, coming out in the next release, you'll be able to copy them. So I have access to this. Um, because I have the, the new release, um, but you can now copy them, Mike. So that probably will help what you're what you're talking about. So if you do want to just make a small adjustment to what you're doing, um, now you can come in. You can copy. It's going to give you that base information. Just give it a new uh, a new title, um, and then fill out any of the you know make any changes to that information you want. But this is going to give you the ability to almost like have templates in place if you wanted to do that. You can copy. Just give them a unique name. Um, it'll be the same with placards. So if I go into placards um, and I have one that I like and I want to hit copy, I can just give it a, a, you know, a new name and, you know, make any updates that I want to it. So this, I, sorry, I completely forgot because it's brand new and I haven't really um, done much with it, but that's going to be really, really helpful for, for managing these things. Do you have for me? Or Morgan, is there anything you wanted to add that I forgot? <laughs> Put you on the spot. No, I mean, I've been putting links to examples okay. and, cool. and things in, in the chat. Um, I'm just really excited to see if y'all go and refresh your catalogs or <laughs> do some improvements. It's always really nice to see when people update, especially like I've seen some libraries have been on Aspen so long that they have like new logos now mm -hmm. and they've really revamped everything. So mm -hmm. excited. Yeah. Okay, well then I'm going to take the last couple minutes just to make another plug for obviously our help center, help.aspendiscovery.org. If um, our theme page is wonderful. You can go to customize um, a number of the things that we talked about today, menu links, placards, system messages, theme. Um, it's going to do what I did as an overview and, and then some. There's a lot of great information on there. Um, we will have all the updates on like copying and all those new settings that the, the sneak preview that I gave you today, that'll be updated by the next release. Um, and then also, if you do want to sign up for our future uh, editions of Aspen Academy, um, we're promoting it really prominently right now on our help center. Um, but you can see all the different upcoming editions or you know things that we're going to talk, the topics that we're going to cover, and we'll be releasing more throughout the year. So we're planning, on, I think, on having nine or ten right now. Um, so we're going to be adding different topics. All right. Well. Wait, when is the uh, next upgrade due? The next update is, oh, I think it's, my calendar. it's next one week, week from now. Yeah, here's a plug. Um, the <laughs> help.askmediscovery.org slash community has our updates, upgrade schedule on it. 
Um, and the next one will be on when you get to work on the 17th. So the morning of the 17th, it actually rolls out at night while we're all sleeping, dreaming of Aspen um, on the 16th. But when you come to work on the 17th, it'll be there on your catalogs. 